in learning objective number three, um, we're very interested in the percent of sales approach. This is a method we can use based on, again, actual information from last year to forecast uh, what is going to happen in the future. Uh, in this case, we're going to use the percent of sales approach again with Huffman Company and project their year two forecasted income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. Uh, one ratio we're going to throw in here at this point is capital intensity ratio. What is a capital intensity ratio or the uh, total assets needed to uh, generate $1 of sales? And we want to look at that again. This is the inverse of the uh, total asset turnover ratio. How many dollars of assets are required per dollar of sales? And if you remember for Rosengarten, we had $3,000 in total assets and we had $1,000 in total sales last year actual. So they had a three to one uh, capital intensity ratio. And let's compare that to Hoffman Company and let's see how, what their uh, capital intensity ratio is as we move forward into this second example. Remember, Rosengarten was three to one. Each company will vary. Um, how much of a plug will be needed in the Hoffman example? We noticed in Rosengarten it was $565 if we wanted to grow at 25%. Uh, if you want to grow faster, it will take more of a plug, more external financing needed. Hence the old adage, it takes money to make money, holds here. Let's look at Hoffman Company now. Um, remember that uh, Rosengarten wanted to grow 25%. Now Hoffman Company is another example. They want to grow a little more modestly. They only want to grow uh, their sales from 500 uh, to 600. They only want to grow 20%. So last year's example was $500 or 500000 or $500 million, however you want to look at it. Uh, and this year they want to do 20% more. So uh, what kind of uh, plug will Hoffman need in their case to grow? Let's look at their income statement first, balance sheet second, and uh, cash flow third as necessary. So again, we look at their actual income statement in year one. They have 500 in sales. To get to the forecast, I multiply the 500 times 1.2. They want to grow 20% next year. It's a stated goal. And so I take 500 times 1.2 and I get new sales of $600. Uh, costs will vary with sales, assets will vary with sales, debt and equity do not, will be the givens. So their costs uh, last year were uh, 400 and we're going to increase those by 20% and they will jump up to 480. Um, and again, it's very simple to do, just take 400 times 1.2. We can also do a percent of sales approach. Last year's costs were 80% of sales, this year's cost will be 80% of sales. So I could take 80% of 600 and also get the 480 a second way. Uh, by subtraction, I will get my taxable income. Last year, the uh, taxable income was 100. This year, it should be 20% higher uh, by subtraction or by multiplication. Uh, 100 times 1.2 gives me my taxable income of 120. I can get that also by taking sales minus cost, come up with the same number. Uh, taxes, their tax rate is also 34%. So we will um, take 34% of uh, the taxable income and come up with taxes of uh, 4080, and then what's left over is net income of 7920. Again, that 7920 should be 20% higher than last year's value of 66. Uh, similar to Rosengarten, they must have similar management thinking. Hoffman Company is also going to keep one third of their net income. Uh, I'm sorry, keep two thirds of their net income and uh, give away one third. So the dividend will be one third of net income and their additions to retained earnings will be two thirds. Same thing will happen in their forecast year. Uh, keep two thirds, give away one third. So I'll take one third of my 79.20 uh, to get my dividends and I'll take two thirds of my 79.20 and come up with 52.80 and that will be my additions to retained earnings. Again, circle that number. Uh, the additions to retained earnings is really the only number I need off this sheet. I'm going to circle it and bring it to the balance sheet and put it in the retained earnings account as we do at the end of every year. So of the 79.20 in net income, we're going to keep 52.80 and give away 26.40. Once again, that's a management decision. Uh, if you would keep more of that, you could grow faster organically. Uh, you wouldn't have to go out and get more debt and equity. But again, that's a management decision. Management said our stockholders are happy. Let's uh, give them one third of our net income again next year. Keep two thirds. Now let's move to the Huffman Company balance sheet. Um, on the asset side, we said assets will vary with sales, so they will go up 20%, and debt and equity will not. So uh, for, for Hoffman Company, the assets were 200, and uh, current assets were 200, and net fixed assets were 300, total of 500 last year. That was their actual. That's going to increase 
20%, so it will go up to 600. So my total assets on the left side of the balance sheet will be $600, and I have to match that eventually on the right side of the balance sheet. Now in this case, we said debt and equity do not. So you see the, uh, out to the right there, you see the letters N-A-N-A. -A. So there's no change in um, total debt, and there's no change in total equity, first time through. So uh, my total debt last year was 250, my total equity was 250, and the first time I spin through the balance sheet, I'm just gonna leave those numbers the same. I must remember my 5280 that I'm going to pull in off the income statement. That is that is my additions to retained earnings in the forecast year. So I'll add 250 plus 52.8 to get 302.8. So my total debt will be 250. My total equity will be 302.8. And uh, then my total liabilities and owner's equity total up to 552.8. I have 600 of total assets on the left. I have 552.8 on the right. Is my balance sheet balanced? And the answer is no. I cannot go home yet. I must balance the balance sheet by plugging it in. <clears throat> it's got to be, the accounting prof said. So uh, the plug in this case will be 600 minus 552.8 or a plug of 47.2. I'll need to allocate 47.2 to the right side of the balance sheet to, to balance this thing out and to grow at 20%. So this is my external financing needed that is required to plug into the balance sheet to make sure that I can grow at the desired 20% rate. Question is, once again, where do I put the 47.2? Do I put it in debt? Do I put it in equity? It's got to go into the right side of the balance sheet. Um, some people will say, just plug it all into debt. Now, the first question that pops up, did I just destroy my debt to equity ratio? Or if it's all long-term debt, did I just destroy my long-term debt to equity ratio? Again, what was it last year? Well, it, uh, total debt to equity was 250 over 250, so it was one, very simply. If I put the 47.2 uh, on top of the 250 of debt, I get uh, 297.2 divided by 302.8, so actually my debt to equity ratio is going down, which is a good thing. So in this case, I made management might decide to put the entire plug onto the debt line and I have a balanced balance sheet, I have a reduced debt to equity ratio, and I'm growing at 20%, so things are looking good, and management at that point may decide to sign off on uh, the budget. So I'm gonna plug the total 47.2 into the, uh, you can see into the uh, debt line, that makes it 297.2, I add that to my 302.8 of um, owner's equity, and my balance sheet is balanced. Can go home now. Um, and again, you have to ask the questions, what happened to my ratios? And did I make some smart decisions with my external financing needed? And how expensive is my external financing needed? Did I plug it in the right place?